host has spent decades studying the Bible in the original languages. He holds degrees from the University of Wisconsin, Moody Bible Institute, Asbury Theological Seminary, and Bethel Theological Seminary. With the help of some of his friends, in 1994, Dr. Rako founded a national volunteer ministry to hunters. He is an author, dog trainer, and speaker. Tom served as a full-time pastor for 36 years. Now here is your host, Dr. Tom Rako. Thanks for joining us here on the Rock Dove Publications Quilt. During today's program, you'll be hearing a true story uh, by a friend of mine who's gone to be with the Lord, uh, Jerry Calouette. He was a host of a, a national radio broadcast called God's Great Outdoors. And he experienced a miracle and an answer to prayer while he was on a hunt in Wisconsin a number of years ago. He was very desperate for an answer to prayer, and he believes God answered him, and I do too. You'll also be hearing an excerpt from my book, Devotions for Hunters and Anglers. I hope that you enjoy today's program. Old Fisherman Never, Scripture Reading, Hebrews 9, 27-28 I was fishing a tributary on the north shore of Lake Superior. Below the spot where I was standing, the path of swirling river cut its way between high rock cliffs around big boulders and then poured into the brilliant blue Great Lake. Just above me, water continually rumbled, tumbled, and thundered through a rugged, rocky gorge. The sights and sounds were absolutely spectacular. I don't know about you, but it is at times like this and in places like this that my deepest thoughts seem to surface. For example, I often think about the brevity of my life. I marvel at how a river I'm fishing has been running night and day, century after century, long before I was born, and that it will, unless the Lord returns first and shuts it off, be running day and night long after I leave this planet. As the Old Testament preacher observed, all streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they never return again. Ecclesiastes 1.7 However, on this particular occasion, I contemplated the profound role fishing had played in my life and in the life of our entire family. For instance, there was my grandfather whom I never met. Although my grandfather might have felt the river's rumbling, he couldn't have heard its loud sounds. You see, he became totally deaf at age three. Even so, Grandpa was a fisherman. In fact, he died with a fishing pole in his hand. My dad, who was 21 at the time, found him after he had failed to return from a time of fishing. Grandpa's tracks indicated that he died in mid-stride. As he went to take a next step, he fell backward. There his body lay between the river and his earthly home along with the number of fish he had caught and the rod he was carrying. Later... I got to thinking about my older brother, Mick. Like my grandfather, as well as my dad, he had a real passion for fishing. The day after his 20th birthday, he and his best friend went to the Mississippi River in order to fish. On their return that evening, there was a wreck. Mick was killed instantly when the car in which he was riding accidentally struck the back of a semi. My brother died in his sleep, not with a rod in his hand, but with one in the car. Many of us have seen plaques or read postcards inscribed with the words, Old fishermen never die, they just smell that way. Now, while it's true that active anglers can and often do carry a strange fishy aroma, they are not immune from death. Indeed, old and young anglers alike can be yanked out of this life. As the writer of Ecclesiastes explained, No man knows when his hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net or birds are taken in a snare, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. Friend, are you prepared to leave this world? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, do not delay, because like my grandfather who died in mid-step or brother Mick who left this world in his sleep, so we do not know what a day may bring forth. Proverbs 27, 1b prayer. Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for sending your son Jesus in order that I might live forever. Help me to live each day as if it might be my last. In Christ's name, amen. Dr. Tom Rako has pulled together 60 hunting and angling devotionals. Every entry has a selected Bible passage to read and a story or personal experience tied into the scriptural point. Some of the titles for entries found in Devotions for Hunters and Anglers include Buck Fever, The Antlered Doe, Catfish Corner, Barnyard Buck, Rabbit Hunt Romance, The Prodigal Pooch, A Case of Pheasant Forensics, Once in a Lifetime Moose Hunt, and Grin and Bear It. You don't have to hunt or fish to enjoy this book. It's a great read for anyone, young or old. To order your copy of Devotions for Hunters and Anglers by Dr. Tom Rako, go to the Rock Dove Publications website, rockdove.com. Visit rockdove.com today. This miracle was related by uh, Jerry Calouet, uh, the late Jerry Calouet, was the host and producer of God's Great Outdoors Radio. And this nationally syndicated Christian radio program seeks to encourage individuals to use their outdoor activities to build relationships and provide a common ground from which to present the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, Jerry went to be with the Lord, his wife, Cindy, uh, who is a big part of starting this ministry. Uh, God's Great Outdoors uh, lives in Ohio. The God's Great Outdoors ministry is continuing on ggoutdoors.org. And uh, Jerry was a, a wonderful friend who uh, I've hunted with. Uh, we hunted turkey together. We hunted uh, deer together. We fished some together in Canada, razzed each other ministered together many times, and uh, he uh, wrote uh, this entry in Hunting Miracles Ancient and Modern, titled, Earned a Buck, Gave a Doe. The wind was swirling on the side of the ridge, which was easy to see, and the falling snow blew in constantly, changing directions. There clearly wasn't any dominant direction, so staying put just didn't make sense. It was only an hour into the opening day of the deer rifle season in Jackson County, Wisconsin. I was hunting on a friend's land, Lynn Settlebauer's farm. Lynn had directed me to this spot on a hillside, an area in the Black River Falls region famous for its large racked whitetail bucks. This part of his farm had been hit by strong winds, perhaps even a tornado several years before. So some parts of the woods had trees knocked over and tops ripped off trees, which had been thrown to the earth in heaps. Also, with the time that had passed, numerous saplings, briars, and brush now choked the areas where the light could penetrate the forest floor easily. And yet some patches of this oak tree filled landscape seemed to be totally untouched. I decided to move up the top of the ridge to see if the wind was better there to avoid a deer getting wind of me. Turning around, the wind was now in my face, but I needed to drop back down to survey the place below where the groups of does that hung out there traveled through. I descended about 20 yards, sitting down in the snow, wind direction still good and steadily blowing past my face. And during the stinging snow, I wiped my scope's lens and waited only about 10 minutes when I started seeing a deer's legs moving through the saplings below. When the deer reached the spot where I pushed out of the tangle, it stopped and looked up the trail at me. All I could see was a face and the head, so I placed a crosshair between the eyes. I double checked for antlers as this was an Erna Buck County, and I was at that location to fill the doe tag which then allowed a person to hunt a big buck. Okay, no antlers, squeeze. Despite the blowing snow and the slightly foggy scope, I had been convinced a deer was a doe. Yet, when the animal toppled over, a sickening feeling engulfed me as its appearance seemed more square-bodied than a doe. 
walking to the deer, I was shocked to find a small seven-pointer. The antlers were the color of the saplings, and I'd even shot through one to hit the mark dead center. I remembered my friend Craig Johnson's last words. Jerry, don't pull up to a check-in station with a buck and no doe. Out loud, I said, Oh, God, you know I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't come to Wisconsin to shoot a buck this size on opening day. What am I to do? I began to contemplate a number of things, all of which were not right to solve the problem. Then the one thing I told my sons multiple times came to mind. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, verse 23. So I sat down on the trunk of a downed tree by the buck, determined to wait all day for a doe. If God did not vindicate me, for he knew my heart, I'd take the buck in alone and suffer the consequences. Through the sounds of the wind, only 15 minutes later, I was sure I heard deer below me. Yet because of all the vegetation, I could see nothing. Then some movement, going from below to the left, still so thick with the only opening about 80 yards, I placed a crosshair on a white birch and waited. Suddenly a doe stepped out of the brush and stopped in front of the tree. I hardly had to move the sight. I walked up to that deer and tearfully thanked God for the gift of the doe. Both animals were taken to a meat processor and given to my friend Craig to distribute to folks in the area who needed the meat. That night in bed, I read my next reading in the Old Testament, which was Psalm 116. And I would ask you to read what the first nine verses say as the Creator God, Jesus Christ, had rescued me that day. But that isn't the end. I had another doe tag, so two days later I sat down on that tree trunk to relive that moment of my Psalm 116 salvation. I placed my elbow exactly as I had that day on my knee and began looking for the white birch. I searched, but all I could see was saplings, branches, briars, and blow-down tangle. Finally, I raised a rifle up, thinking that in getting above all that stuff, I could sort it out and find the tree. Well, that worked, and then I just followed the trunk down to the spot where the doe stood, I could just barely see the birch tree as that opening was now so choked with trash there could be no way to shoot the 80 yards to the doe. However, on that morning, I promise you, there was nothing between me and that white-tailed deer. I'm reminded of Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Wow, isn't God awesome? The true story depicted in this work is one of four events in my life that go beyond being able to be explained by the laws of nature. Now, you may say, there's no way that would have happened. Understand, at the time and for days afterwards, I struggled with the reality of it too. But going over it time and again, reflecting on what I'd seen in my rifle scope, I knew it was true. God had used the event to strengthen my faith in who he is, plus deepen my relationship with the Lord. Well, that's uh, Jerry Caluet. He's gone to be with the Lord, but uh, I appreciate his honesty. He shared an honest hunter's nightmare. You know, many hunters that I know, myself included, will from time to time wake up in a cold sweat because they find themselves trapped in a moral dilemma trying to decide whether they will do the right thing while on an imaginary hunt. In the late Jerry Calouette's case, it could be that the same God who opened up a way through the Red Sea for his Hebrew people to escape the Egyptians, as recorded in Exodus 14, also opened up a path of trees for a split second to allow a bullet to bring down a needed doe. Could it be that those gnarled trees were pushed back by the breath of God in order to answer a prayer made 
by a desperate hunter who sincerely wanted to do the right and lawful thing? Well, I believe so. When we come back, I'll have some closing words. Hunting Miracles, Ancient and Modern, contains true stories of how God has worked in the lives of hunters down through history. This unique work, edited by Dr. Tom Rako, contains true stories by nine different contributors. In Hunting Miracles, readers discover miracles that took place on hunts more than a thousand years ago. See how God has used deer, ducks, geese, and even wood ticks to reveal his power and presence. Be encouraged by how the prayers of desperate hunters have been answered in amazing ways. To order your copy of Hunting Miracles, go to the Rock Dove Publications website at rockdove.com. Again, to get your copy of Hunting Miracles, be sure and visit rockdove.com. I believe that God is still active today, and he will hear our prayers, whether we're on an ocean, in a church, in the woods. Uh, He's unlimited where we can talk to him. I remember hearing the late James Irwin, one of the few people to walk in the moon, and he said that God answered prayer even on the moon. Well, Jerry made reference to Psalm 116, and even though uh, the psalmist was evidently facing something that uh, could have meant his death, uh, Jerry refers to this, and uh, I want to read those first nine verses. This is the uh, New Living Translation, Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was faith in death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, and so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. Now for Jerry, those are the first nine verses of Psalm 116. You know, for Jerry, it was not a life and death situation, but especially as um, the founder and host, uh, as he was at the time of a national radio broadcast, you can imagine uh, the scrutiny that he could have received. And uh, I, I just thank the Lord for him. He's with the Lord. And I'm thankful for he and his wife, Cindy, and the impact that they have had and continue to have. I hope you will join us again next time on the Rock Dove Publications Quill. been listening to the Rock Dove Publications podcast with your host, Dr. Tom Rako. This program has also been brought to you by the Quilted Arrow, home of intelligent, stylish, field-bred English pointers with bloodline streams from Hall of Fame champion Guardrail. Thank you so much for listening. Now this is Beth Rako inviting you to join us again next time on the Rock Dove Publications podcast. <music>